Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Israel arrests three Jewish suspects who killed a Palestinian teen. Muslims in Iraq are raping Christian women as part of the spoils of war. The IRS is forced to pay $50,000 to a Christian ministry. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Fox News reports that Israel has arrested three or maybe even six Jewish suspects who reportedly killed a Palestinian teenager. The teenager was abducted and burned to death last week and now three Israeli citizens have confessed to the crime. Last Monday, and in fact, they were cooperating with authorities reenacting the incident as the country's leaders raced to contain a public uproar over the slaying of one Palestinian teen. The confessions of the crime came as other violence continued on Israel's volatile front, volatile front with the Gaza Strip. As you can imagine, uh, the Muslims are outraged and Palestinian militants have bombarded Israel with some 40 or more rockets, missiles, and mortars, drawing Israeli airstrikes in retaliation. At least eight Palestinian militants were killed digging a tunnel and trying to import bombs into Israel. 1,500 reservists in the Israeli Defense Force have now been called up to supplement their military as Islamic violent reaction to this one teenager's death is now escalating. But Israel is trying to do the right thing. As Israel pressed ahead with mobilization of forces along the Gaza border, the Hamas militants vowed revenge, saying the enemy will pay a tremendous price. Well, Israel's already issued an apology. In fact, they've arrested the Jews Israel arrested the Jews who did this crime. In fact, uh, Army spokesman, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner said that Israel is prepared for potential de deterioration and war in Gaza with potential use of military force as required. The region has been on edge for weeks since three Israeli teenagers were kidnapped and killed in the West Bank. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, but first I wanna read the statement by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He said this, I would like to express my outrage and that of the citizens of Israel over the reprehensible murder of this Palestinian teenager. We acted immediately to apprehend the murderers. We will bring them to trial and they will be dealt with to the fullest extent of the law. In fact, we denounce all brutal behavior. The murder of your son is abhorrent and cannot be countenanced by any human being. Isn't that amazing? The extent to which the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, is going to apologize to the parents of the, Israel, the Palestinian teenager. They're trying to do the right thing, but you think they receive that kind of reciprocation on the other side of the fence? No. Uh, last week, three Israeli teenagers were murdered and they were also buried. Uh, in fact, they were abducted from their home, from trying to come home, and uh, the Palestinians claim that the death of their one teenager was in somehow a Jewish retaliation for the murder of three Jewish teenagers in revenge killing, so, so to speak, after those three Israeli teens were abducted and killed last week. Of course, uh, the response of Israel to how the murder of their three Jewish teenagers is completely counter opposite of the response of the Palestinian leadership. We reported last month that these three Israeli teens were 
kidnapped and went missing for days. There was a national outcry. Sadly, their bodies were discovered. And uh, do you think the Palestinian leadership condemned in any way the kidnapping and murder of these three Jewish teens? Do you think the Palestinian leadership arrested anybody or brought any kind of justice to their families? No, absolutely not. There's no apology from the Palestinian side for killing three G Jewish teenagers. Note the contrast. Here's a quote from the Hamas spokesman. He said, in any case, I congratulate the adopters and the murderers of these three Jewish teens because our prisoners must be freed from the prisons of the occupation. So in other words, he endorses kidnapping innocent civilians and killing innocent teenagers in order to trade them for prisoners, for terrorists really. They're gonna trade terrorists for innocent teenagers and that's how the Palestinians roll apparently, or at least Hamas. In recent weeks, Palestinian militants in Gaza are now firing more than 200 rockets toward Israel. 40 on Monday, including one that reached Beersheba, a major city about 30 miles away from Gaza. Israel said it may now have to uh, escalate their defense to go after these concealed rocket launchers that are honestly manufactured in Iran and brought around on ships to the Gaza Strip. Well, that's the news. Note the contrast between, and our thanks again to Fox News for most of that report. Note the contrast between how the Israeli government deals with their own criminals. They arrested the, the Jewish men, maybe three or six suspects who are gonna go to trial for killing one Palestinian teen. They're dealing with it to the fullest extent of the law in a proper way that provides justice to the victim's father. National apology by the prime minister. But on the other foot, when the Palestinian terrorists kill three Jewish teenagers, there's no apology. And in fact, they praise the murderers and say, yeah, we should do more of that. We should kill more Jewish teenagers. And of course, there's a big contrast there. Reminds me of what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but the foolish doesn't depart from evil. They're overbearing and they're self-confident. Would you pray with me? Let's take a moment and pray. Father in heaven, we observe the wisdom in this delicate situation by the Israeli leadership and Prime Minister Netanyahu. And Father, they are doing everything they can to depart from evil, to avoid killing teenagers and children, to even criminalize and punish any perpetrator who would do that kind of thing and provide justice to the victim's family. But Father, we see the, the demonic approach to government by Hamas that, that they do not want to apologize, they just wanna kill more Jewish teenagers. And they praise the abductors and they praise the murderers and say, we should do more of that. Father, we pray against that demonic spirit and we pray the wisdom of God and the spirit of God would bless the Jewish people with peace. Father, give them wisdom and strength to protect their own way of life. We pray this blessing and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Militant Muslims are raping Christian women as the spoils of war. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief. You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. 
Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Thank you for watching PIJN News. Shubat.com reports Muslims in Iraq who are members of ISIS are conducting what they call jihad marriage, also known as sexual jihad, and in doing so have been entering random homes, pulling out Christian women and raping them. They entered the home of a Christian family and demanded, for example, that they pay an Islamic tax, known as a dhimmi tax. When they said, the Christians said, well, we don't have enough money to pay your tax. Three Muslims seized the mother and daughter and gang raped them in front of the mother's husband. After enduring such an event, the husband who watched the brutal victimization of his wife and daughter sadly committed suicide because he could not bear the guilt of not, being, not protecting them. According to one report, in one instance, ISIS members entered the home of an Assyrian family in Mosul and demanded to pay a poll tax known as a jizya. When the Assyrian family said they didn't have enough money, three members pulled them out and raped them. According to one witness, women are being kidnapped from their house by ISIS warriors and forced into jihad marriage, in other words, raped. After one woman was raped, her brother also committed suicide because of the guilt. One activist explains, one of the cases, a brother's, woman's brother, some of this is redundant, uh, but the Iraqi culture says that when a woman cannot be protected by her family, then she is taken and raped. It becomes a huge source of dishonor and stigma to the family who did not protect her as we read from one Mideast writer, ISIS Muslims kill unarmed men, kidnap children, and rape women. Here's a picture of a nine-year-old girl. Her name is Tanya, and she was raped and molested by 13 Muslim men. Here's another picture uh, from Sweden, I believe. Uh, a woman, a European woman, who was gang raped by a group of Muslims because in their words, well, she was asking for it. She was unveiled, didn't wear the hijab or, or the burqa, and that makes her a target. Now let's get this straight. And that's the news, our thanks to shubat.com. But you know this is actually taught in the Quran, And we're gonna discern the spirits here in a minute, but I just wanna tell you that Muhammad himself, the false prophet who wrote the false book, the Quran said that rape is okay during war. Here's a direct quote from the Quran in chapter 33. O prophet Lo, we have made lawful unto thee wives unto whom thou hast paid thou dowries. Not just lawful for wives that you pay dowries, but it's also lawful to make wives out of who? Those whom thy right hand possesseth of those whom Allah hath given thee as spoils of war. So in other words, you invade a town, this is how he motivated his troops, right? You invade a town, you kill all the men, all that's left over are the women and children, and guess what? You can rape the women. That's your reward for joining Muhammad's army. This is in the Quran, people, that it's okay to rape women as the spoils of war. And not just those women, but also the daughter on your uncle's side, the father on your daughter's side, your aunt's side, your father's side, the daughters of your uncles and your mother's side. In other words, you can rape your cousins, your nieces and nephews. And a believing woman, if, if she follows the false prophet, Muhammad, and the prophet desires, then she can consent to be married. You're not supposed to rape the Muslim women. 
We are of war, we are aware of that which we enjoined upon them concerning their wives, and also those that you possess in your right hand during war, and that way you are free from blame. It's not a sin, Allah is forgiving, Allah is merciful if you rape your enemy's wives. That's what the Quran says, are you kidding? Okay, so let's take that to the next logical step. Same chapter of the Quran, chapter 33. I just read verse 50, what does it say in verse 59? Oh, by the way, this is why burqas were invented. You know the burqa that basically drape that women have to wear in Islam. Here's a picture of some women wearing the veil and you can only see their eyeballs. Why do they wear those clothes? Where did that come from? It's in the Quran and we're gonna back up and show you the verse here. Muhammad said the burqa shows which women you should not rape. So we've already established that it's okay in the Quran to rape women, but how do you, how do you tell apart the women? You don't wanna rape the Muslim women, so make them wear a burqa and then they should not be raped. It says this in verse 59, O Prophet, tell your wives and daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks, veils all over their bodies so that they may be thus distinguished and not molested by the warriors who are raping women. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? That's why they wear burqas? So that you know which women should not be raped? That's what the false prophet Muhammad teaches and that's why he has enslaved all Muslim women under the veil so that you can distinguish the Muslim women who should not be raped, they're wearing burqas and veils, but if they're not wearing a burqa or a veil, it's okay to rape them because those must be the women of the enemy. By the way, in Europe, this is no longer flying. The French government said no women can wear veils. Doesn't that violate their religious freedom? No, they appealed to the European Union, has now ruled it's okay for France to ban women from wearing burqas in public because not only do they enslave women who wear them, but they endanger the women who don't wear them. Allowing women to wear burqas in France is a signal to all the Muslim men that it's okay to rape the women who are not wearing the burqas. This is not religious freedom, this is a signal to Muslim men to rape Christian women in France. France became the first country in the EU to ban the burqa in October, excuse me, in April of 2011. Soon after, that was followed by Belgium, and since then, Italy, Switzerland, Denmark, and even areas of Russia and Turkey are no longer allowing women to wear burqas. Thank God for that ban. It's not religious freedom, it's protecting your women from rape. Most of the time those laws have been challenged, courts actually now favor the ban. They say it's not religious freedom to force a woman to wear a burqa. It was appealed to the European Court of Human Rights, which acts like the Supreme Court on matters like this. And I appreciate this slide, uh, this woman not wearing a burqa. Stop Muslims now, she says, I'm not willing to let Muslims rape and kill me just to prove how tolerant I am. Are you tolerant? of that kind of behavior, I'm not. By the way, that demonic spirit throughout the Quran, throughout the false prophet Muhammad, speaking through him and deceiving people, up to a billion people now or more, is the opposite spirit of what the Bible teaches. Jesus taught this through the Holy Spirit who wrote through Paul in Ephesians chapter five, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hated his own flesh. He nurtures, nourishes and cherishes his own wife as Christ loves the church. This is how Jesus teaches us to treat women. Do you see the contrast? Do you see the Holy Spirit in the Bible? Do you see the demonic spirit in the Quran? Let's take a moment and pray. Father in heaven, we renounce the false prophet Muhammad and his false scriptures which teach men to abuse women. We renounce that demonic spirit and instead we invite the Holy Spirit to rule our hearts to fill us with true and genuine love for women, to treat them with respect as our equal partner, and Father, to honor them and to uplift them and to cherish them and nourish them as your gift to mankind. Father, we pray your blessing. Help us discern the spirits that are behind these religions. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, that went a little long, but when we come back, the IRS has now been forced to pay $50,000 to a Christian charity making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back.
Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. The Daily Signal reports the IRS here in America has been forced to pay a $50,000 fine to a Christian ministry organization after the IRS violated the law and the privacy of donors to the Christian organization. The IRS actually published their secret donation list. Two years after activists for homosexual marriage obtained the confidential tax document and donor list of a national Christian group opposed to homosexual marriage, the IRS admitted wrongdoing and agreed to settle the resulting lawsuit? It's a miracle. The Daily Signal has learned that under a consent judgment, the IRS agreed to pay $50,000 in damages to the National Organization of Marriage as a result of the unlawful release of confidential information to the homosexual group, the Homosexual Rights Campaign, HRC. That is NAM's chief political rival. Here's a quote from John Eastman, who is the uh, director of National Organization of Marriage. Congress has made the disclosure of confidential tax return information a serious matter for a reason. We're delighted that the IRS has now been held account, accountable for the illegal disclosure of our list of major donors from our tax return. The IRS initially declined to comment on the story, but later sent an email, ironically, their spokesman Bruce Friedland emailed saying, Privacy laws, specifically section 6103 of the IRS code, prohibit us from commenting. Well, gee, you can't comment to the newspapers, but you can release the confidential donor lists to the homosexual group of the Christian donors? That's not right. Judge James Ketcheris granted the settlement and the IRS was represented by Eric Holder of the DOJ. By the way, uh, back in February of 2012, how did all this begin? It began when the homosexual rights campaign posted on their own website, a tax return that listed Mitt Romney's name. He was a presidential candidate, but he's also a donor to National Organization for Marriage. That secret donation was outed. And Mitt Romney was accused of being a Christian, or at least being against homosexual marriage. And that was published everywhere. Huffington Post, liberal news sites. And by the way, the homosexual rights campaign president at the time, Joe Solomonese. The guy who posted that or his organization did was tapped as the national co-chairman of the campaign to elect, guess who? President Barack Obama. Can you see the political corruption there? The Obama administration uses the IRS to re release Mitt Romney's tax records. And then 
Obama gets reelected after using the IRS to abuse that power? That's not right. The Bible says this in 2 Peter chapter 2, they promised them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person to that, he is enslaved. Our thanks to uh, the organizations who are reporting that, our, the Daily Signal and to NAM, and uh, I'm just so encouraged that finally the IRS has been held accountable. Let's take a short break. We're gonna do a one minute commercial and then we'll be back to conclude the show. This is PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Thank you for watching PIJN News and supporting our ministry by calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God or visiting our website PrayInJesusName.org we need your donations to stay on the air. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. On tomorrow's show, we'll discuss the Vatican and exorcism. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.